Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here. Oh, I can't stand to be 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from Psalm 88. O Lord, why do you cast me out? Why do you hide your face from me? Wretched and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. From all sides they close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbor to shun me. My companions are in darkness. An article by theologian N.T. Wright has me thinking and reflecting. I'm giving my voice to the ideas that he wrote about. If you're anything like me, this time of isolation is hard. Here in Lent, we've been asked to give up a lot more than chocolate. In this time of COVID-19, I'm giving up most of my routines. I'm missing my children and grandchildren. Video chats just aren't the same. I'm missing gathering with you in person too. When I do step out of the house, I encounter suspicion my own suspicion around of those who are around me, I'm wondering who might be a silent carrier of this disease. And others give me wide berth and look at me out of the corner of their eyes, especially if I were to sneeze. There are few friendly greetings. And in this, there's no promised end. Sure, our government leaders have some tentative dates, but Many of those have come and gone already. They don't know. Governor Hogan, at least, is honest about that. Tells us until further notice. The finger pointing feels familiar, too. Who hasn't said to someone that you love, if you had just, you can fill in the blank, then this wouldn't have happened. If you had just closed the back door, the squirrel wouldn't have gotten into the house. We want explanations. We want to point to something. I've heard of plenty of self-righteous people these days place blame for this virus. It's punishment. Punishment from God. It's politics. It's so-and-so's fault. Likewise, there are a lot of people who put out some false hope. You've heard it yourself. And if you're like me, there are part of you that wants to believe it. If you've got the courage to look outside your own bubble, it's a whole lot worse. New York, Italy, refugee camps, places in the world where people have already lost almost everything and now have to deal with this. And the questions come, where's God? Our ancient faith ancestors experienced this, wrote about it, sang about it, they didn't wait for just some kind of little simple explanation. Their psalms are full of lament. Psalm 6, Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul also is struck with terror. While you, O Lord, how long? Or Psalm 10, why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Psalm 13, how long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? And Psalm 89, how long, O Lord, 
Will you hide yourself forever? How long will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. Remember, for what vanity have you created all mortals? Who can live and never see death? Who can escape the power of Sheol? And in all this, our faith ancestors, even in the midst of their despair, recalled God's promises and the reality that God grieves with us. This is a hard time. The ground hasn't settled yet, but the image of God grieving with us is actually more comforting than, to me than finding fault or settling on God, abandoning us to our own incompetence. Jesus came and did just that grieved with us, and was vulnerable. And when we have no words, the Spirit speaks with sighs too deep for words. That's really enough for now. Enough for me to go and do the next thing. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit 